Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Chapel of the Good Shepherd for our Year 9 2023 information uh, session. I was just speaking to a few parents. First time some of you have been into our fantastic chapel, so if it is your first time, welcome. It's been a bit of an eclectic week, I'd call it, this week in our chapel. Uh, we've had a, a formal chapel service. We've, we've had a staff meeting in here. And we've had Scott Darlow, who's um, an Aboriginal, um, well, rock and roll recording artist who was in here yesterday working uh, with our students. So we're certainly making the most of this really beautiful space. And I know the students are enjoying it. And we're certainly enjoying it too. So um, welcome. Um and again, it's really nice to be able to do this. We've certainly had a few years where we haven't been able to gather and, and these type of sessions have been online, and uh, which is fine in terms of trans, uh, transmission of information, which we know we can do, but it's certainly not the same as being together and being able to answer questions and all those sort of things. So welcome. I, and I'll start with an acknowledgement of country. Here is the land, here is the sky. Here are my friends and here am I. We thank the Bangarang peoples for, for the land on which we learn and play. Hands together, our hearts are bound. We are proud to be on Bangarang ground. So um, for us, obviously, year eight is the uh, end of our, our middle school structure and uh, we look forward to our year eights moving into year nine into the senior school. Um, and while senior school is different in terms of some philosophy um, and a teaching pedagogy and obviously subject selections and, and other opportunities for our students, uh, one of the major benefits, obviously, of Cathedral College being a prep to year 12 students is those transition years um, are really quite smooth, uh, much smoother than they can be in other places because uh, we know the students, we know our year eights moving into year nine. Uh, they know us and they know the staff that has taught them. Many staff teach across the sub-schools, which is a fantastic thing. And so this evening you're going to hear from our, uh, head, uh, our year nine coordinator, Glenn White, uh, you're going to hear from some of our fantastic senior school students and you're also going to hear from our Director of Studies, uh, Julie Finlay and Sue Sinnott, our um, Coordinator of Digital Learning. Thanks everyone for coming tonight. Uh, so I'm the Year 9 Coordinator for Cathedral College. This is my second year in the role and um, we've been implementing a lot of different programs and we're still at the stage that we are trying to implement a few more problems and a few more programs into the future. So I would like your input and your constant feedback as well on, I ask the year nines constantly and parents as well, just to see where the students are at and what their needs are. And then we move forward from there. I think it's probably the biggest part of my role is transitioning from middle school into senior school and the ability that this is one of the trickiest parts of their lives. And it's up to me to try and facilitate that, help them along and then just navigate them through the process as well. And so, my speech this afternoon will entail looking at a brief little message as well, um, something to think about. We like to think of not where they're going to go, but the purpose behind it. So where they want, what skills they like, what they attribute to be important for them, and then finding a purpose, whatever it is at that particular time. And Year Nine's a great year to just basically try different things. And if they don't succeed, let's move on to the next thing and the next thing. And the ability to go through school-based apprenticeships to university degrees, most of the students in Year 9 don't know what they quite want to do yet. So that's up to us to try and filter out what they would like, what their purpose is, what their likes and dislikes, and then try and find out where they would like to go. So the way it'll work is that I've got three of my beautiful Year 9 students that are leaders Okay, and I've asked them to talk, so it saves me sitting up here and talking as well, but you can actually ask them questions as well because they've experienced exactly what it is to be in Year 9 and the expectations. So I'm going to get Elsa to start talking about... The, hold on, just yet, Elsa. Hold up, me first. Um, I'm going to get Elsa to talk about the Year 9 camp. It was a little bit different this year. I'm then going to get Mackenzie to start talking about social enterprise and what that entails. And then I'm going to get Ava to talk about some of the fears about Year 9 and stepping up from Year 8 and moving into senior school. Um, because you go from one of the leaders in middle school to all of a sudden be one of the babies again in Year 9 and then you have to start all over again. So the first snippet is um, just a quick clip about purpose. This is the world. Question, what kind of mark do you want to leave on it? 
that's a tough question to answer, you're not alone. In fact, less than 50% of 35-year-old adults can articulate their purpose. But those that could showed greater physical health, better cognitive condition, better cardio functioning, they sleep better, live longer, are psychologically healthier, and have less depression, anxiety, boredom, loneliness, and disengagement, and more happiness, hope, and life satisfaction. And we'll come back to this one. But those who find their purpose in high school have a higher acceptance rate into college. Now, back to the question. What kind of mark do you want to leave on the world? The misconception is to hear that as, what do you want to do? That's the how. Finding your purpose is all about the why. Like, maybe you want to be a nurse, but why? Maybe it's because your purpose in life is to help people. Or maybe you want to be a journalist, and the purpose behind it is to let people know the stories that can influence progress around the world. This online toolkit was developed by academic experts over the last decade to help you find your purpose. Not a purpose, your purpose. And back to the college thing. When you know your purpose, every college admission essay you write changes from a challenge into an opportunity. You won't be another person in a stack of papers. So just get started. It takes just a couple hours over a few days. Days that will affect the decades to come and everyone you meet along the way. Because finding your purpose can help you do more than leave a mark on the world. It may help you change it. Okay, so my, um, my information this evening will be about all the different programs. I'm not going to go into them individually, but if you would like to ask any questions and everything else like that about any of the programs, or if you'd like to ask any questions for, to my year nines, come forward and then just um, I'll fill you in on the details a little bit later. So the focus of my pure focus is to guide the year nine students to basically from middle school through the hardest transition that I believe of their adult, adolescent lives and I start treating them like adults, okay? So it's a big step up for the year eights and it's a sort of acknowledgement that yes, I'm old enough, I'm mature enough and now's the time to start thinking about what type of person you want to be, where you want to go, and some of the opportunities that are available to you. doesn't matter what opportunities they are. We sort of try and figure out a way and a different pathway for individual students. Um, it involves a lot of problem solving um, to challenge their way of thinking outside of the box. Teamwork, creativity, resilience and respect, we do two units on in Homeroom this year. Um, resilience in terms of grief, in terms of um, building character, and relationships are really important. It's probably one of the biggest things that, in particular, Elsa will touch on in just a minute. Um, and independent thinking as well. So um, students that make the most, and that's what we're going for at the moment, students, students that make the most of year nine will get and they'll develop stronger relationships. One, it's a little bit different this year than any other year, but I'll let Elsa say that. So I'll leave it on to Elsa and you can describe the year nine camp for me, Elsa. Thanks. Our year-level camps at Cathedral College allow all students the ability to gain confidence, friendships, connections and relationships at the beginning of the year. The Year 9 camp was predominantly to Mount Buffalo, where the walks from the gates of the base of Mount Buffalo to Lake Katani at the top. Over three days, all groups complete a variety of outdoor activities, including caving, rock climbing, abseiling and a range of initiative activities. Due to COVID last year, we were lucky enough at the beginning of this year to have a surf camp to Torquay and completed a range of coastal activities, including surfing, surf kayaking, mountain bike riding and coastal walks along several beautiful beaches, including the famous Bells Beach. The camp was amazing and for the whole year level to be there at the same time, definitely brought the whole group together as it was missing for quite some time. One of the main themes and topics we focused on at the start of year nine and on the camp was being on the right journey. Thinking about where we've come from, who we'd like to be, and where we'd like to be heading, solo time was a session where we reflected on what we were grateful for, and we constructed a template that we used to write a letter home to our parents. The letter was then read out to, to a designated parent, 
and or guardian at home, which I found very confronting but incredibly valuable by letting my mum and dad know how grateful for, I, for them I am and how much they mean to me. Thanks, Alison. For anyone that can remember this time, in a couple of months' time, you will get a letter from each individual Year 9 student, so just be banking up on that. And it's incredibly awkward. It's sometimes a little bit daunting for not only parents but students at the same time, but the rewards you get from it are huge, okay? So look forward to that next year. Um, students also make the best and of the most of Year 9 create and take opportunities. Now, social enterprise is an elective that I'm going to get Mackenzie to come up and have a chat about. Thanks, Mackenzie. Social enterprise at Cathedral College is an important subject that all students take, a part, take part of as a part of their studies in Year 9 that go for a semester. This program is created by the Australian Rural Entrepreneurship that are, that are based in Beechworth. Stu students in this elective can choose a cause or a charity and in their social enterprise elective can produce products or services that can be sold to generate a profit profit for their chosen charity. Some electives include food technology, materials technology, agriculture and horticulture and art. I completed my social enterprise experience last semester. My business was called Under the Sun. We made hats, earrings and recycled magnets in our business but first before we did anything we had to pitch our business to a panel of teachers which included our principal Mr Jones. We had to explain how our business was going to be successful, the processes we were going to use, and how, as a group of students, we could achieve this goal by the end of the semester. Group work, problem solving, social skills, promotional tools, a solid worth ethic, and a dedication to make this business work were all fundamental in achieving my business's $340 profit, which didn't include us giving back the money that we loaned from the school and for our products. This money that my business raised was given towards the Australian Cancer Council. Mm. Cancer Council. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy Social Enterprise next year. Thanks, Mackenzie. Um, social Enterprise has been going ever since I've been here at Cathedral College, and I don't know the statistic, Mrs Finlay, but we've raised somewhere in the vicinity of $60,000. 40, sorry, $40,000 that goes to donations, charities and everything else like that over the years that we've been running it. So it's quite a successful program and they're planning on going up to Queensland and promoting it up there later on as well. So our next part, students who take the most opportunities in Year 9. Um, my biggest uh, point at the moment is taking responsibility, is taking their responsibility for their learning their actions and their behaviours is one of my strong points that I'm teaching in Year 9 as well. So I'm going to get Ava to come up and she's going to say a few fears and problems with stepping up into Year 9. Stepping into the senior school in Year 9 was very daunting for many students. I myself found it somehow difficult, but... Moving over to the science rooms for homeroom and learning in a variety of different rooms in the senior school area could be difficult and it definitely helps to get your steps up. There is a lot of walking. I have found in year nine that there is much more responsibility for our own learning. There is much more self-reliance. The teachers respect you more as a young adult and there is more opportunities for independent thinking and learning. Teachers become more of a facilitator to our education and instead of hand-holding, provide us with the content and tools and guide us to achieve our potentials. The homework and expectations increase slightly and it is easy to get caught behind in your studies if you don't put in the work or communicate effectively with your teachers regularly. In our homeroom sessions, the teachers will assist us with becoming the best versions of ourselves and help us to take responsibility for our own learning, especially when it comes to the VCE studies, and encouraging us through what can be a very difficult time in our lives. Thank you, Ave, and thanks, girls, for coming for tonight. Um, other opportunities for the Year 9 program. We encourage them to do a junior coaching program. So Mr Lane is our sports coordinator here at Cathedral College, and he runs all sorts of sporting programs from football, netball, hockey, um, basketball, a range of different sports. And 
the year nines are specifically um, catering for coaching opportunities. So they come, they submit their expression of interest to me, very similar to a job interview, and they sit through the panel. They uh, write an application, very similar to if they're planning on getting a job in the future. Simple little skills like this set them up for where they want to go. Therefore, um, and from there, they'll be selected or the successful candidates will be running training sessions at lunchtime. They'll come and one session is the grade six, where some of these guys, um, even in here today, have done the grade six into school competition and they had a year nine coach for that whole entire time. And you moved on from there. So um, facilitating sporting carnivals, which is ass, cross country, swimming, they get them in the pool to help out some of the little kids that can't swim properly and encourage and uh, um, emulate really prosperous and good role models for the junior school students is probably the biggest thing. The Y Lead program is something that I created a couple of years ago, and it's a junior mentoring program that focuses on art, it focuses on um, reading, writing, and um, using the grade threes to try and work them through some of the difficult times as well. So the year nines sign themselves up for that as well. Um, tree planting is giving back to the community. And the end of the year activities, we organise usually a float that goes from Yarrawonga and downstream. They just get an inflatable device. We're all there at the same time. It's nice and hot and we float down the Murray all together at the same time as a way to symbolise we've got through this most difficult year and it's a bit of a reward at the end of it. Um, those that didn't want to do the float, we did clay target shooting and archery and all different range of activities there as well. Um, students that make the most of year nine, we start exploring career pathways. Mrs Finlay is going to go down a little bit as well. We set SMART goals at the start and at the end of the terms to make sure that one, the students are focused, they want to achieve goals, which makes them feel better, and that they're progressing as we're going along. Um, we do a careers unit, having a think about what they like, what they don't like, where they would like to go, and what sort of um, career aspects they would like. So it's a good opportunity. I know some of my year nines are starting a work experience. Um, so if they get a taste of mechanics, plumbing, all that sort of stuff, if they want to become a tradesman, it's a great opportunity. And if they don't, it's not too late that they can try and steer in another path. But it gives them a taste of everything as well. Um, Mr Dunbar is our careers advisor here at Cathedral and he comes into some of our homeroom sessions as well and gives advice on what careers they would like to do. Um, the Year 11 information evening is when I grab selected Year 11 students and the Year 9s, we haven't done it yet, guys, but the Year 9s will actually ask them all sorts of questions like who are the best teachers, what are the best subjects, um, what career you would like to do. Most of the questions are around fast tracking, okay? Um, particular students that would like to start VCE a little bit earlier or fast track a vet course or a subject, they answer all those questions and they'll give it to them in blunt terms rather than a teacher explaining it to them. And then going from there. Um, they follow their passion. So we encourage them in year nine to try different electives. Some of them and some of them choices that they will make, they might not get their first elective. But we try and encourage them as best as we can to try different electives. And if you don't like it, we can slightly do some alterations depending on how Mr Carson's feeling and how busy he is. Um, students start to think about their strengths and interests and encourage to promote ideas and their pursuits in the future. Now, this is a program that we're looking into and investigating at this stage. It's not running here at Cathedral College yet, but the Duke of Edinburgh Award, we're looking at how it's going to fit into our timetable, our budget and our curriculum and maybe even our staffing. So that one there is, we're still investigating at this stage. Um, I'm going to now pass you on to Sue Sinnott, which will take on the digital learning. Thanks, Glenn. And hello, I'm Sue Sinnott. I'm the Digital Learning Coordinator. And I'm just going to build on a little bit of a few of the things that Glenn said about the students taking more um, ownership of their learning and the platforms and the digital things that we put in place to help them do that. On the board, you can see a picture of Sector Learn. Now, Sector is our learning management system. At and each student is able to see this already and probably all the students here will be going, yep, we know what sector is. So sector also has a parent portal called Sector Engage and many of you would already be, um, have logged into this and be able to see exactly what I've got um, on the screen at the moment. Uh, from these portals, I'll just jump back to the student one for the moment, the students can access a range of things. I'm going to highlight just a few today, um, but please go home and ask your student to show you their sector learn and 
get the information from them or contact the school about um, logging into Sector Engage. So you can see that they're very similar from the start. So from the Sector Learn portal, I'll go to the dashboard first. This is just an example, it's a senior student and you can see that there is a list for homework, um, a spot for a task list and then their timetable is there as well. That's just a few of the things that this student has selected. So their homework is right there at the front, easy for them to find. From a parent perspective, um, you can choose for this, this parent has two students, student A and student B, and you can see that student A has a couple of bits of homework, but student B has cleared all their homework, so there's nothing in that list. And you can see that both of their uh, timetables are below for the parent to have a look at. Um, I'm just going to head to the assessments now. So for the students, as soon as the teachers have released the upcoming date of an assessment, it will appear in the student's um, upcoming assessments list. But parents can also jump on and check that to help the students get a little bit more organised. But of course, in Year 9, as Mr White said, we want them to take a little bit more ownership and start um, being in charge of those deadlines themselves. Uh, when the marks for the piece of work have been released, the students will be able to see the feedback from the teacher and whether there's a request from the teacher to put in a student feedback. Um, keep going. From the courses, and again, this is the same in Sector Learn and Sector Engage, the students will see the work for the lesson. This is quite different depending on the level of the student, the year level of the student, the subject base, and whether the teacher is delivering remotely for whatever reason, or because the student is away, or the teacher's away. Um, so there's a lot of different configurations for this screen, but basically the headings of what's for each lesson will be there, and sometimes some of the information. At the bottom of the courses list, there's another spot where the homework will be, but uh, remember that I showed you that the homework also appears on that dashboard for the student to um, be able to check in on it. The last thing is that you can see a whole timetable and I don't know that if you can see it but on Tuesday in the purple there's another little icon in there uh, that shows what assessments are due. So it also helps the student know oh, this week I've got a big week, I've got four assessments due or this student's only got one. Um, so again it's another check, the parents can see it, the students can see it, you can customise it, you can colour code it. but. Basically, it's for the students to take the ownership um, of what's going on in their classes and their learning. I'm going to hand over to Mrs Finlay now. Thank you. So this evening we've heard about opportunities and creating opportunities. Um, we've heard about create, uh, taking responsibility and finding purpose and that idea of passion. So how do we do that within our academic program? Um, you have in front of you a handbook in that this is a handbook which is purposely designed to cover year 9, 10, 11 and 12 so that when you're actually looking at the subjects you're actually thinking about well what does this look like in the future. If we had had the opportunity to meet like this in year 7 I would have explained that we have core subjects from year 7, 8, 9 and 10 which include English, Mathematics, Geography, History, Science, RAVE, which is Religious and Values Education, and Health and Physical Education, um, right the way through so that it is a sequenced program which allows you to build up a broad general knowledge which can help you in all of those subjects at Year 11 and 12 in whatever form you choose to take them but also provide you with a broad general knowledge that can also enrich those programs. Year 9 is no different, Year 10 is no different. It's when we get to 11 and 12 that we actually start to narrow down those choices. And that's where coming into Year 9 and thinking about your purpose, it's really important that you start to explore who are you, what do you enjoy, what are the sorts of things that you would like to explore a little bit more than if you, what are your friends are doing. This is a chance for you to shine and for you to find out what you would like to do. So in the handbook, um, hopefully you will also find 
that there is a subject selection elective form. Um, I do encourage you to actually look at all of the subjects to see how they lead into electives in Year 10 or to VCE or VET subjects in Year 11 and 12. Um, generally, we offer a broad range of subjects so that it allows you to actually combine some of these or mix and match some of these subjects. Um, it is important to think about that pathway into the future because some of the electives you choose can help you go, actually, that is something I really don't want to do or I'm actually going to try this to see what it's actually about. You do need to think about sequencing because some subjects do require you to have a continuous build-up of knowledge in order for you to be able to do them at year 11 and 12, and I'll explain that in a moment. All of them have this idea of developing a sequence program so that you can um, study them later on. A big change, well, a slight change for you is you've had electives for two periods a week. Um, next year, you will have three electives and each of those are three periods a week. So an increase in time in year 10, that goes to four periods a week. The idea building towards the required time that you would need in VCE where you have those subjects for 10 periods. So when you actually look at your elective subjects, um, you will see at the top there are six electives which are in red. They're the social enterprise electives. And we would like you to rank those one to six, just the red ones, on pure choice of what you would like to do as your social enterprise. So I'll give you an example. If you enjoy Matt Tech, you will learn the skills of Matt Tech, but at the same time develop a business that involves wood um, or metal or plastics. It's taking those skills that you would normally learn, but you're applying them with purpose. You're applying them with a purpose of making um, a difference to the cause that you choose. And those causes are purely what the students choose to do. Um, we have raised over $40,000. That was at the start of the year um, for different causes. And that ranges from environmental causes to cancer, to mental health, um, literacy for young students. Um, part of the program is actually looking at what you would like to make a difference with. Um, and as Glenn mentioned, we have got some students who are going up to represent Australia, if you like, um, in Brisbane in the September holidays at the World um, Social Enterprise Forum. And they're actually sharing their experiences of how a program like this can help them um, look forward and make a change into the future. So the red electives are the social enterprise electives. And you rank those completely differently uh, to the other electives. Now, how do the other electives come about? In year seven and eight, you had to do a performing arts elective or a visual arts elective or a physical education elective technology elective. The idea of that is that you now have a foundation of skill which you can apply to your more specific purpose or your more specific direction that you would like to go. They're still available to you. So if you would like to do music or drama or food technology or materials technology, they are still in there. The idea being that you can still follow those. Outdoor Ed, I know, is also one that's particularly popular. But in addition to that, there are what are introduction subjects, which might help you decide whether you'd like to study them in year 10 as a fast track subject, or whether you'd like to go, hmm, that's good, I, I do know I'd like to do that, um, or I don't want to do that. So for instance, um, Business management is a, a subject that you can study later on. This is an opportunity to try this now. Introduction to sport and recreation, again, is one that you may choose to do now to see what it's like before taking it on in year 10. Um, and the other one is social psychology and health. Can I do a huge disclaimer? 
If you do not get that, it does not mean you cannot study that later on. So please do not stress about that. Um, I just want to reassure you, if you can, it's nice for you to try it. What happens then in year 10 is we offer you other ones to try, like legal studies, and the idea over 9 and 10 is you get to experience some of those subjects. Um, with all of these things, there are limits on numbers, and if you get back your selection form um, and it's not exactly what you wanted, it's always worth actually contacting us and see um, because we have people moving between those subjects all the time. We never know that it's not your um, passion unless you tell us. So please um, do follow that up. There are some exceptions I need to make you aware of. So if your intention and you're good at a language, then you need to continue a language in year nine for both semesters. So you will pick Indonesian or German in semester one and semester two. I do know that that means less elective choices for you and may knock out some of your favourite subjects, but it is one of those subjects that require a sequence, constant build-up of knowledge in order to be ready for that at BCE. Okay, so, um, and the same applies if you do a distance language, you do need to continue that for the whole year um, for year nine and for year 10. If you choose at the end of year 10, and I know it's difficult because then when you get to year 11, you're only picking, you're narrowing it down to six subjects, we will give you a completion certificate. And can I reassure you that you actually can pick up those subjects um, at university, kind of the choices open again. Um, as I said, there is a sequenced um, reasoning for our build-up of elective time and we do know that a lot of these subjects do feed into your choices at BCE and it's worth looking at what they are and what's available um, in the booklet. Um, most of the things we've already mentioned about social enterprise it is really worth thinking about what your passion is because it is a great way to actually apply that in a real world situation. You will be challenged by some of those things. Communication and negotiation is really important, isn't it, sometimes, Mackenzie? <laughs> Being really organised because if you don't buy that particular thing for that particular day, it's not there. Um, but it's a really um, worthwhile experience. Somebody described it to me once as the closest thing to being an adult before you become an adult. Um, so please go into that with an open mind. Um, the idea for us is that it's around that brainstorming, um, planning, prototyping, um, and building up those skills that are required. <coughs> And the students do get to celebrate with a pop-up market where they're selling their wares um, at the end of each semester. So what I'd finally like to leave you with is this idea of you having a conversation and you having a think. What are you interested in and can that help you to formulate what your purpose is? This is a start of a journey you don't need to know now. Um, and what are the skills that you would like to target through the things that Mr White's talked about in the co-curricular program that could help you build those skills, broaden those skills and be the best version of you? Um, that's the formal part of the evening finished. But Sue, Glenn and the students and myself are here. If you have any questions that you would like to ask individually at the end or you can email afterwards. As you will see, there's some time to actually complete this form. So the electives you rank one to six and then each column you rank individually. So um, in this column you would rank one to five, your preferences in this column. That's for the first semester, this is for the second semester. Then you sign it and you hand it in to Mrs Lloyd. Mrs Lloyd collects all of those things in and then at the start of next term we will issue the letters of the subject allocations. Thank you very much. It's lovely to see you in person and rather than doing this in a video and please stay behind if you have any questions.